why would people, for example, for the for the Chikuni Music Festival, why do people walk 51 kilometers the whole night to come to a festival uh, and be there for three days and sleep out in the open in the field, you know, because they want to be part of this. Um, what I learned in terms of why people get there, uh, go there, was very similar to why people would go to a similar event in Australia or in the States. Or, you know, it's what drives people. Um, it's it's about the inspirational factor of, of the of the of the um, production or the work. It's about people being part of a of a sharing and growth experience. It's part of people feeling they they are. They've been consulted, they were part of this, they, they, they created some of this, and they own it. Um, those are the, the things I think that drive people to walk uh, miles and kilometers. It's part, I think the other part was people being connected through that festival to other parts of their lives. Um, being perhaps even feeling that they're solving some problems for themselves as a community through coming together through this event. Our experiences sometimes are very culture bound and uh, what is theatre in my country may not be theatre in England, and what you know, and we need to start understanding those things. So we need to widen our definitions um, in terms of understanding the world, but we also need to contextualize our understanding of our own situations, so that we're not perhaps misapplying um, some of these things. We can participate in, in in artistic events in so many ways now, as opposed to the past, where you had to physically think about venues, and we no longer have to do that. And people can participate from their homes, from a place you don't even know that they're participating in your event, <laughs> and they are. We have radio, we have you know people uh, on the internet, people doing all sorts of things. In my own country, um, radio is the most powerful way to participate. And uh, the thing that interested me about the new ways of participation is uh, is something that I experienced um, with a with a with a, a keeper of a, one of our waterfalls. He he looks after this, and it's in a really remote place. But when I found him one day, he had, you know, he, he told me that he listened to this radio program. It's a, it's a radio play. And uh, he was very invested in the whole thing. He was very passionate. He had these opinions and he wanted to be part of this whole thing. And um, he wanted to write to the, to the, to the producers of this play and, and make his comments. And he had no way of sending the letter to, to the producers. So, so he said, well, I need to send this letter. You know, I need to talk to the, to the producers. They need to know my opinion. So, since there was no post office or anything like that, um, we agreed that on a certain day he would leave a letter to the producer under a, a stone, which were identified under a particular tree. <laughs> and um, three days later, when I came back from uh, where I'd gone up north, sure enough, I found the letter there, and you know he had addressed it to the producer. And uh, I took it to the radio station and I asked them to please read that letter out because they had a little, you know, bit of the program where they let, read the letters out. But it, it really um, opened my mind to the fact that people participate from a distance and it's the new normal. Uh, people, we will probably see more people participating in our events uh, as part of our community um, from distance, uh, from you know, locations that are not even connected to what we're doing. People will invest themselves when they feel part of something and a lot of what is emerging now is that people participate in the arts when they feel like they are being creative and part of what is going on.